I don't know how many times I've spoken about this economic vandalism of the energy minister, Chris Bowen, cheered on by Anthony Albanese and a mirror image promised by the Liberal government of New South Wales, demonised coal, endorsing the repeated Bowen commitment that to get to 43% emissions reduction by 2030. Now, these are Bowen's own words. We'll need 22,500 watt solar panels every day. Do you reckon 22,000 went up today? Uh, unbelievable. Every day for eight years. We'll need 47 megawatt turbines every month. We'll need 10,000 kilometres of additional transmission lines. And Albanese and Perite have committed the poor taxpayer to fund $7 billion to connect Snowy Hydro to the grid. Snowy Hydro is a flop, another Turnbull disaster. The tunnelling machine there is called Florence. It's bogged in Kosciuszko's soft earth, and rightly questions are being asked whether the project will ever deliver. Now remember, Snowy Hydro was announced without a business case, a $2 billion project, according to Malcolm Turnbull. It's now being said the bill could reach 20 billion. 20 billion. Experts say lifting this tunnel boring machine called Florence out of the bog is no easy task. 2,400 tonnes it weighs, fair weight to lift, and it's 143 metres long. Now, this thing's meant to drill 15 kilometres through the mountains. We're told it could travel 30 to 50 metres a day, but they've only made 200 metres in 10 months. That's an average rate of 60 centimetres a day. Centimetres, not 30 metres or even 50 metres. This is a failure that no one will admit to. Malcolm Turnbull's gone. The mess is left for someone else to clean up. But we still pursue these emission reduction policies, as I said, supported by Keane and Perrottet in New South Wales. Well, the Institute of Public Affairs have, has come to our rescue again. They've released a new research report, an analysis of the employment consequences of a net zero emissions target in New South Wales. Now, remember, Matt Keane has said 70% reductions by 2035, not even Bowen's 43%. And the IPA says 138,000 jobs are at risk, 67% in rural and regional areas. Much of this is common sense. But Daniel, Daniel Wilde is the very smart and articulate Deputy Executive Director of the IPA, and Daniel joins me. Daniel, thank you for your time, but look, when's this madness going to stop? Well, great to be with you again, Alan, and that's a very important question, and it's only going to stop when those who are in regional communities incurring the cost of all of these policies have their voices heard loud and clearly. You know, the fundamental problem is we have these city-based politicians and bureaucrats in Sydney and in Canberra and in Melbourne who have never set foot on a farm. They have no appreciation for the modern standard of living that we have. And they're imposing these emissions reductions policies on both sides of politics, you know, coalition and Labor, federal and state level. They're imposing these policies. But who has to carry the can? It's regional Australians in mining, manufacturing, uh, transportation. You know, these are the people that put food on our plates, that keep our lights on, yet day after day they're being attacked by these inner city uh, politicians and, and bureaucrats. And we've already seen two uh, key government bodies, the ACCC and the Australian Energy Market Operator, saying, look, we've got critical supply shortfalls on our eastern seaboard. We need more gas and more coal onto our market, uh, yet the government ignores these warning signs and is going faster and faster with these net zero policies. 